Good morning everyone and welcome to another video on Mr. Ong Math Lesson. Today we're going to tackle the NCA Level 3 Probability Concepts and let's go. So we shall remember that in Probability Concepts there are three ways or more, slightly more, three or more ways to calculate uh, probability. The first way is using the tables, the second way is using the probability trees and the most common way, the other way, is doing the Venn diagram. So in the question, they will not tell you which method to use. So table is the most easiest way to do. Uh, but then, depending on the question, sometimes you can't solve it using table. So in this case, we shall look at question 1. And question 2 and question 3 will appear in later videos. Okay, let's go. So let's read the question. After the exercise, the blood sugar and dehydration levels of 80... Uh, 80, the total is 80. Year 13 students from one high school were measured. Blood sugars were uh, classified either as low blood or normal blood, so low blood or normal blood, and the dehydration levels were classified as dehydrated or not dehydrated. So we have done a table of low blood sugar and normal blood sugar on the rows and the column we have dehydrated and not dehydrated. We are going to put in the numbers there. So because there are 30 in total, so 30, uh, 80, I mean 80, so the total will be 80. Next, we need of the 32 people with low blood sugar level, so low blood sugar, the total is 32. 20 were also hydrated, so hydrated is 20. So we are putting in all the numbers in there. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, uh, of the 53 students that were not hydrated, so not hydrated, there are 53. Uh, so you need to fill in the box now. Okay, so now we're going to fill in the box. We are going to put in numbers there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, if you know this is 80 and the low blood sugar is 32, the normal blood sugar will be 48. So I got a different pen, uh, 48. Okay, so that must be 48 because 48 plus 32 is 80. Similarly, if you want to know the hydrated, if not hydrated, it's 53, that must be 27. Because 27 plus 53 will give you 80. Then now we're going to fill in the other boxes. So, so now it's 20 and 32, so that must be 12. And then 27 minus 20 is going to be 7. And then 53 minus 12 is going to be 41. Okay, that is how the table is going to look at. Once we have filled the table, we are going to answer the question and we should get an easy achieve. So the question asks you, calculate the probability that the student was, de was dehydrated. So dehydrated is here. So 27, it's going to be 27 out of the total, which is 80. And that will give you a simple achieve in this paper. Not too bad, right? Great. Now we shall look at the second question, we still need the table. Later we'll look at the table again. So, explain whether the event that the student is dehydrated and student of low blood sugar are mutually exclusive. So, if you look at the formula booklet, the formula for mutually exclusive is probability of A and B is equal to zero. If they are not equal to zero, then they are not mutually exclusive. So, again, since they are dehydrated, and low blood sugar, if it is equal to zero, then it is mutually exclusive. If it is not equal to zero, then it is not mutually exclusive. So from the table, we look at the tables again. So you're looking at dehydrated and low blood sugar. So look at the table, dehydrated and low blood sugar, that is 20. So the probability is 20 out of 80. So the probability of the is 20 out of 80. So this is not equal to zero. So you can say that they are not mutually exclusive. Why? Because that probability is not equal to zero. And gentlemen and ladies, that is an easy merit in this paper. Not too bad, right? Okay, the third question is exactly uh, what I'm going to give the answers from the marking schedule, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time. So they say, give two reasons why care should be taken when using the data to estimate the probability that any randomly chosen year 13 student in New Zealand shows low blood sugar levels after exercise. Okay, so the first example is that the student was only selected from one school. 
So the proportion of low blood sugar after exercise may give a different result at another school. So one school is not good enough, so the result may be different in other students from other school. And the second reason possibly is that there are only a small number of students, so there were only 80 that were being studied. The estimate of the probability of low blood sugar after the exercise may be less accurate for this small group of 80 students. So 80 students is not a good representation of the whole of the country. So that two reason will give you an excellence. That was easy, isn't it? Okay, great. Now we shall look at the third uh, B, question B. Okay, okay, this is a bit harder. Okay, we shall read the question now and look how we can tackle this question. Okay, both hydration and low blood sugar are said to decrease cognitive thinking ability. Okay, so I'm going to put DCA to represent decreased cognitive ability. So DCA represent that. Okay, so in the study of another school, for the 15% of students that were hydrated and low blood sugar, so we did a three diagram, hydrated, not hydrated, low blood sugar, normal, low blood sugar, normal. So they say that dehydrated and low blood sugar is 15%. And of that, 45% show decreased cognitive ability. So, decreased cognitive ability is 0 0.45. So, to calculate dehydrated low blood sugar and decreased cognitive ability, you just multiply 0 0.15 times 0 0.45. They'll give you 0 0.0675. So far, so good? Great. Now, they say for the 57% who are not hydrated, so not hydrated, and have normal blood sugar. So we are going this route now. And it is 57%, so 0 0.57. 5% shows decreased cognitive. So you multiply by 0 0.05. So if you are not hydrated, you are normal blood sugar, and you have a decreased cognitive ability, the probability you multiply this with this, and the answer is 0 0.0285. And then the last part, for all other students, so we, the other two, we consider others. So you take 1 minus 0 0.57 minus 0 0.15, we give you 0 0.28. They say that 32% shows decreased cognitive, so you multiply by 0 0.32. So the other 0 0.28 times 0 0.32 will give you 0 0.896. Okay, so the question in the uh, exam will ask you, calculate the probability that a randomly selected student showed decreased cognitive ability. So it could be here, here, or here. The three different categories so you're going to add the three numbers so this plus this plus this and the answer is 0 0.1856 and that will give you a merit in this question okay not too bad right okay now the last part we have to use the table again this table okay so the last question is going to ask you calculate the probability we have to look at the table later okay Calculate the probability that a student with decreased cognitive ability that are not hydrated and have normal blood level sugar. Okay, so you need to know the formula from the form booklet. Probability of A given B. This is conditional probability. Is probability of A and B the over probability of B? So they ask you what is the probability that not hydrated and normal blood sugar, not hydrated and normal blood sugar, given they had decreased cognitive ability. So the formula is that you're going to be this and this and this. So probability of not hydrated normal blood sugar and decreased cognitive ability divide by B, which is the DCA probability of decreased cognitive ability. That's the formula to know. So to calculate the probability of not hydrated normal and DCA, we have to look at the three diagram again. So we have to look at this. Okay, so not hydrated normal and normal DCA is 0 0.0285 and probability of DCA is going to be 0 0.15856 so the first part is 0 0.0285 and the bottom part is 0 0.1856 divide them and that will give you the answer that is not good enough you need to write in context so you must answer the proportion of students with decreased cognitive ability that are neither hydrated nor have low blood sugar is about 15.36%. And if you can answer that, that is an excellent. So technically, have a go at it. This is only question one. Watch the video on question two and three and practice hard. Do the question again. And before long, you should be able to master this in, uh, external, which is worth four credit. 
Take care, everyone, and have a good day, and see you soon. Cheers.